Okay, so the topic of this video is a type of cell transport called active transport. Now, before we go into active transport, let's take a moment and refresh the other kinds of transports that were mentioned in previous videos. On the far left, we're going to have an example of simple diffusion. In this animation, you can see the green circles are more concentrated on top, and they are diffusing to the bottom until there's a nice equal distribution, until there's what's called equilibrium. In the middle of the picture, we have what's called facilitated diffusion. Now, it's, it's very similar to diffusion because molecules are moving from a high concentration, you can see in the picture on top, to the bottom where they are lowly concentrated. And that movement will continue until, again, there's a nice balance. The difference being in facilitated diffusion, the molecules are too large to simply squeeze through the cell membrane, so they travel through those protein channels. Both of these two examples are, are what we call passive transport because the cell does not need to expend any energy in order to move those molecules. It's a natural process. But this video is going to focus on the far right. On the far right, we're going to have what's called active transport. In a moment, you're going to see the big difference. But watch this. There is a molecule flashing right here, symbolic of a molecule called ATP, adenosine triphosphate. And this is an energy molecule. And with the help of this energy molecule called ATP, during active transport, molecules will be moved from where they are lowly concentrated to where they are highly concentrated. So it's really just the opposite of passive transport. So let's go ahead and go into the details now. So if you've seen my previous videos on passive transport, we had a kayaker that was in a river, but the kayaker was facing the direction that the current was traveling. Well, in this case, the kayaker is opposite of the current. So does this kayaker need to spend his energy in order to move? Of course, I'm sure you, you would know the answer would be yes. This kayaker is going to have to you know, use the paddle and put a lot of energy, a lot, a lot of muscle to fight the flow of the water. And so active transport is kind of like a kayaker going upstream. So with active transport, molecules move against the normal process of diffusion. Molecules are moving from a low concentration to a high concentration. They're moving not down the concentration gradient, but they're moving up the concentration gradient. And if you kind of imagine an analogy, like for instance, moving uphill, pedaling a bicycle uphill, you know, that's going to require some energy. So in, in active transport, energy is required. In my animation, you can see that brown circle is trapped inside of that protein channel that's embedded within the cell membrane. So what's going to happen is a molecule of ATP, adenosine triphosphate, is going to reconfigure and reshape that protein channel. So with the release of energy, the protein channel will change shape that will allow that brown circle to pass to the other side of the cell membrane. Notice how the protein channel then went back to its original shape. And this process would then repeat with another input of ATP. And so active transport acts like a pump. It's a way for molecules and ions to be pumped either into the cell or out of the cell depending on where they're needed. But if you think about a pump, any kind of pump, like a bicycle pump, if you want to pump up your bicycle tire, if you want to pump up a soccer ball, you, you need to input some energy in order for a pump to work. And in the world of cells, energy comes in the form of a molecule called adenosine triphosphate, ATP. So here's a great example of, of a cell with a pump. In this case, it's called a contractile vacuole. This is an organism by the name of paramecium. It's, it's very small, microscopic. You need a microscope to see it. It lives in pond water. And paramecia, they live in watery environments. The problem, because they live in watery environments, the problem is the cell could actually overinflate with water. If too much water enters the paramecium by simple diffusion, the cell could burst and the paramecium could die. So the contractile vacuole, you can see the black box highlighting the contractile vacuole in this picture. The contractile vacuole 
contracts. And every time it contracts, it'll squirt out some of the excess water that is inside of the cell, prevents the cell from bursting. You know, for those of you who might be familiar with boats, boats have what's called a bilge on them. In case a boat ever springs a leak and ocean water comes rushing into the boat, a bilge will turn on and pump out the water to hopefully keep you afloat long enough either to reach the shore or for help to come and get you. So this picture, by the way, I took this from the Coast Guard website. And for those of you who are into boating, I hope that these are good safety tips here for you when you um, consider your bilge on your boat. But let's come back to the paramecium here. Let's zoom on in and take a look at this process. So here we have a paramecium and it's sitting in water. And like the, the notes say, water simply diffuses into the paramecium from a high concentration to a low concentration. You can see the black dots are representing water molecules and they're diffusing in. The problem is this paramecium could eventually burst like a balloon inflated with too much air. This paramecium could burst. So to prevent from bursting, the paramecium has what's called a contractile vacuole. In the animation, you can see the contractile vacuole is pumping. What, it's, what is it pumping? It's pumping out a lot of the ex excess water that has simply diffused in. But this pump requires energy, energy in the form of ATP. Again, it's a great example of active transport. Another type, uh, another type of, of, of way that cells can take in and move molecules is what's called endocytosis. Now, if you break the word into prefix and suffix, endo simply means inside. Cyto refers to the cell. So the word means take inside the cell. So endocytosis is a process where the cell will take in substances through the cell membrane. Now, there's kind of two subcategories of endocytosis, and one of them is called phagocytosis. And this is when a cell will take in and engulf and swallow up a solid molecule, solid, solid particles. In the animation, you see that yellow object has been taken in, taken in a little more, taken in a little more, taken in a little more, and now it's fully uh, surrounded by the cell membrane. And so perhaps this was a bacteria that the cell swallowed up so it'll kill it. Perhaps this was the, the yellow object, perhaps it was a food molecule that the cell really needed on the inside. By the way, my notes say that WBCs, white blood cells, WBC stands for white blood cells, are a type of phagocyte. They're called phagocytes because they swallow up bacteria and viruses through what's called phagocytosis. The second type of endocytosis is called pinocytosis. And very similar in concept, the difference between phago and pinocytosis is that in pinocytosis, the cell will, it will engulf and take in liquid particles. But the concept is the same. One thing I want to mention is that unfortunately viruses can also enter our cells through the process called endocytosis. Here we have a cell membrane and on the outside of cell membranes we have these little lumps called receptors. And watch what happens. In this case, in this animation, a virus will match the receptor. Now normally when an object matches the receptor, that object is a needed molecule. The, uh, the cell will need that molecule on the inside. But viruses have adapted to match our receptors and kind of fool and trick our cells into thinking it's a needed molecule, a needed nutrient of some kind. So in the animation, the virus has matched the receptor and the cell will begin to swallow it up through the process called phagocytosis. And ultimately, now that the virus has been swallowed up by phagocytosis, the virus can then release its DNA or its RNA into the host cell and ultimately can begin the destruction of that particular cell. When we learn about viruses later on in the school year, we'll go into this process in a little more detail. But that's unfortunately one way that viruses have kind of learned to use our cells against us. Uh, the viruses have learned to use the cell's natural process against us. So the opposite of endocytosis simply is exocytosis. You break the word down into prefix and suffix. Excess or exo, excuse me, exo means to give off or to release. 
to exit. Cyto, cyto simply means the cell. So the word literally means exit from the cell. So in this case, we're going to show you that it's a process where substances and molecules are expelled or released from a cell. So uh, example of, of items that are released from cells, you can see right here, proteins and nutrients and waste. So our, our cell is constantly creating waste and that waste needs to be released. And so what we're going to show you in just a moment is that a cell part by the name, an, an organelle by the name of a vesicle will carry and release objects through the cell membrane, through the plasma membrane. So here we have in my animation a vesicle carrying about four black dots. Well, notice what happened is that the vesicle has fused with the cell membrane. The cell membrane and the vesicle are made from the same uh, bilayer, phospholipid bilayer, and so they literally just kind of fuse and form with one another. And as the process continues, the vesicle slowly is taken into uh, the cell membrane, and eventually the black dots are released. Those objects are released from the inside of the cell to the outside of the cell. So there you go. There's a real quick video on active transport. Notice the big difference, again, is that it requires the input of ATP energy. If you're in my biology class, you know, pause this video, try to answer these seven questions, and, and bring me your answers before school or after school one day. I'd be happy to check them for accuracy. Pause the video. Good luck.